name is Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our program. Now, today's message, we're going to talk about the pit of life. And some of you right now have found yourself in a pit of despair. But the good news, this day you're coming out. Be blessed by this message. The title of this message is Don't Quit in the Pit. You've heard me say before, the pit ain't it. (laughs) But many people that are watching by television and some of you here today, you found yourself in a pit of despair. And what happens is sometimes that pit of despair comes with some kind of tragedy in your life. When some kind of trauma comes into your life, it brings a spirit of fear. And then that spirit of fear can lead to depression, which will put you in a pit that you feel like you can't get out of. And that is the number one thing that I get prayer for on our prayer line, or as I evangelize, is depression and anxiety. And this is even from Christians, and we don't need to be ashamed of it, because this is a tormenting spirit that is alive today by the enemy, and the Lord wants you set free. So whatever you're in a pit today, We're going to decree and declare that you're going to get out. Some of you are in the middle of your miracle, and it's time for you to be free from this pit because God's got great plans for you. Now, before I get started, I got something a little funny I thought was funny. But how many of you know when you're in the pit of life, so many people want to give you their opinion? And I like what I read the other day. If you're not Jesus Christ, sometimes we don't need your opinion. We need your prayer, amen? But I read this and I thought it was funny, so I want to read it to you before I get into the word. A man fell in a pit and many people came along with pit opinions. The Pharisee, you deserve your pit. Only a bad person falls in a pit. The charismatic, brother, just claim you're not in that pit. Just claim it. You're not in a pit. (laughs) The realist, now that's what I call a pit. The self-pitying, you haven't seen anything until you see my pit. The optimist, things could get worse. And the pessimist, things will get worse. So isn't that so true that when we're going in the pit of life, everybody's going to tell us what we need to do. But I can tell you that you're never alone in the pit. Bad things happen to good people. Uh, The enemy is alive and well, but you're never alone in the pit of life because Jesus is with you there. And some of you feel like he has forgotten you, but he hasn't forgotten you. But this day, we're going to decree and declare whatever pit you're facing that you're going to come out. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Genesis 37, 14 through 17. Then he said to him, please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flocks and bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron and went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him and there he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What are you seeking? So he said, I am seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding their flocks. And the man said, They have departed from here, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your presence. Lord, anoint me to teach this word. Anoint every heart to receive in Jesus' name. Now, we all know the story of Joseph and and how he was Jacob's favorite son. He was born to the love of his life, Rachel. He had 12 sons, one daughter, but Joseph was special. And we all, and the brothers were very jealous of him anyway, because he was a tattletale. He always got him in trouble. But that went to the next level when Jacob gave him a cloak or a robe. 
See, it wasn't just any robe or cloak. It meant level of authority. It meant, it meant I have picked you. I have set you apart. You have a purpose. It's, it was like a mantle. And you've got to understand that people will never have a problem with you as long as you're not doing anything for the kingdom of God. But honey, once God starts using you, that's when people can get jealous. That's when they're going to talk about you. So just know that it comes with it. So anyway, after this point, he told his brothers you're going to bow down to me one day. I had this dream, and y'all were going to bow down at my feet. Well, these brothers were already jealous. That's something you don't need to do. He needed a little wisdom there. You know, sometimes you got to be careful about who you share your dream with. Because have y'all found there's dream stealers out there? I don't think you need to be doing that. I don't think you heard from God. And some of you, if God tells you to do something, you need to hold on to it. But you don't need to share it with everybody else. Because some people can't handle what God has called you to do. But some of you need to start dreaming again. Because see, some of you feel in your spirit, well, every time I've dreamed something, something bad has happened. Every time I have believed for something, I'm just going to believe for the worst and then I won't be disappointed. But this is a time for you to dream, and you need to dream big because we serve a big God, and there is no expiration time on his, on your dream. And I believe, as Amanda was saying, the enemy will put those thoughts in your mind. No need to quit praying about that. It's not going to come to pass. But we take those thoughts captive. So anyway, Joseph, uh, Jacob said, now go find your brothers. They're tending sheep. They're at Shechem. So I guess the favorite son didn't have to tend sheep. But y'all, that was eight miles away. Now, I don't know if he walked or if it was a donkey, but that was a long ways to Shechem. Well, he goes to Shechem, and he's not there. And the man said, well, they're not here. They've gone from here to there. They've gone to Dothan, and y'all, that was 10 miles further. That's 18 miles. Now, I rode a bus to school for 20 miles. That's a long way. That's not including picking up all everybody else. I can't imagine walking or riding a donkey. But as I was thinking about this, it would have been easy for him to say, I'm going to go back and tell daddy they wasn't there. Take a shortcut. But you know, God knew he could trust Joseph. See, there's a lot of people that are called by God. They are anointed by God. But they're not ready to go the extra mile. Want just enough to give God enough to get by. Our leftovers, when we serve a God of more than enough. He's calling us in these last days. I believe there is a remnant rising like we're here today that we're saying, yes, Lord, whatever you want us to do, we're willing. Lord, whatever, wherever you want us to go, we're willing. Lord, ever who you want us to pray for, we're willing. In these times, the Lord is waking up his church. He's doing a new thing, but we'll never get there with an old mindset. We got to believe a mighty God that we serve, that he still does miracle signs and wonders. We got to believe that he's not finished with America yet. He's not finished with the church yet. He's not finished with us yet. Amen. This is not a time for the church to hide in the closet somewhere in fear. The darker the day, the brighter his church is going to shine. Amen. So I believe a remnant is rising to say, Lord, use us. We'll do what you're asking us to do. Well, there was a divine connection that was there. Even though it didn't make sense, God put that man there because that was a part of God's plan. God has divine connections in your life to get you where he wants to take you. But you got to be obedient to take the first step. And I can tell you in this ministry 
God continues to send divine connections. In fact, every one of y'all are a divine connection. I met y'all through ministry. Some of you showed up at the Cameron Center. Some of you, you know, you're just in church where we've been in churches. But God has a way of connecting his body, kingdom builders, to do what he asks us to do, to encourage each other, to be there for each other. This is a time we need to be holding each other's arms up because I tell you, we're in, everybody is fighting their own battle. And we need to be loving each other and encouraging each other in these last days. But he has divine connections. So many times I have been places that I really didn't want to go. I wasn't ministering, but the Lord said, you need to go and support that person. Now, to be honest, I had brother lay on the couch and let Doug massage my feet. <laughs> I'm so spoiled. After preaching, that's a, that's a, okay. massage my feet. I hear everybody else, y'all did the same thing. <laughs> He's anointed for that. Let me tell you. <laughs> Got to have these big feet working properly. <laughs> so he has divine connections. But every time that I have done that, God had somebody there that knew somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody else. But you got to be first to take the move to be obedient to what the Lord is asking you to do. So Joseph went the extra mile. He went to Dothan and he found his brothers there. Well, these brothers hated him so much and had so much anger that you know the story. They took his cloak, put animal blood on it, threw him in a pit, sold him as a slave, took the coat back to his father and said wild animals killed him. How could someone have that much hate and bitterness in their heart that they were ready to kill? We live in a world that is so full of anger and bitterness and hate and we in the body of Christ have got to guard our hearts. I'm not saying you're going to go kill nobody. No. But you know what? You can kill the anointing of God in your life. Let's read a scripture here. I'm having fun. Hebrews 12, 14 through 15. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. We got to pursue peace. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, he became peace for us. But you got to pursue peace. It's not going to just fall in your lap. Have you found out that some people are harder to love than others? Some people's not just a thorn in the flesh, they're a whole bush. <laughs> and you better be full of Holy Ghost and fire if, they're, if you're in the room with them. <laughs> but you got to pursue peace. You got to choose your own battles. So many times the best form of spiritual warfare is to keep our mouth shut. We can rebuke the devil all day long and rebuke the devil and the Lord's saying, just shh, shh, let me fight the battle. And that's so hard for us that love to talk. But you got to pursue peace. So you know what? We need to fall in love with the word of God again. We need to fall in love with Jesus. We need to be filled with his spirit and say, Lord, just fill me to overflow. And I think it's like Amanda said, sometimes we start running on fumes because what we do is we get our eyes off of Jesus. We get our eyes on our situation. Then all of a sudden the enemy comes in, but we got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I believe that the wind of the Holy Spirit is going to come in here today and refresh us and empower us. And we're going to leave here ready to tell this hurting world about Jesus and to love people where they are. We're called to be fishers of men. We catch them, the Lord cleans them up. I know a lot of people that catch them and want to skin them. 
Tell them everything they're doing wrong. They don't know they're doing anything wrong. They're new Christians. We need to love them and we need to discipline them. I mean, disciple them and tell them more about Jesus. Some of them need discipline. Who's laughed over there? So anyway, he found himself in a pit. And he was doing the right thing. And some of you have found yourself in a pit that you didn't ask for. Maybe you found yourself in a pit of lack because maybe somebody lied on you on the job and you got fired and you were doing the right thing. Sometimes maybe you were doing all you knew to do to take care of yourselves and you fell in a pit of sickness. Maybe you lost a loved one or a tragedy came and, and you're lonely and you found yourself in a pit of depression. But you know, this is the day that we're going to decree and declare that you're going to come out of that pit. But you know, there's things that we can learn from the pit. But you got to know when you're in the pit, that's when the enemy wants to work on your mind. Because your mind is a battlefield. And he's saying, okay, I got them down now. If I can just wound them a little bit more. If I can just tell them you're worthless. You're alone in this pit. You know, you can be around people everywhere and feel all alone. When you're in that pit, you feel all alone. Even though people love you, people are all around you, you feel all alone. But that's when the enemy wants to come against your mind. You're worthless. You'll never amount to anything. You should be guilty. Things will never work out in your life. You were a terrible mother. You were a terrible father, wife, whatever. Fill in the blank. That's why you got to take every thought captive. Take every thought captive and speak what God says you are. That you are a child of the king. And he loves you the way you are. Now, how many of y'all could use $20? Nobody here needs money. But anyway, if I took this $20 bill and I squashed it up, even if I stomped it, would you still want it? Yes. Why? It's still worth $20. And some of you can relate because maybe you've been through some hard times in life. You've been abused. You feel like you've been wadded up, stepped on. But you know you're, you belong to Jesus. And he loves you just the way you are. And your life has value. And he's not finished with you yet. Even though the enemy says, okay, even if you've got a sickness, the enemy will tell you, you're going to die. You're never going to make it. You're going to starve. You're never going to be happy again. You've got to take those thoughts captive because you are a child of the king. You are the head and not the tail above and not beneath your royal priesthood chosen generation. You're a child of the king and he loves you just the way you are. And you need to start speaking that word back to the enemy when he's trying to tell you those things. And sometimes you just got to preach to yourself. Get in front of the mirror and preach to yourself and preach those words to yourself. Because God's working in your life now. But there are times when we're in the pit that it gives us a time to get real with ourselves. When you're in that pit, that's the time to say, Lord, show me my heart. Because we're living in a world now that everybody wants to blame everybody else. It's their fault. It's their fault. And sometimes we just got to point to ourselves and, Lord, what am I doing wrong? So in the pit is a time that the Lord can reveal things to you if you'll let him. If you'll take your eyes off everybody else and say, Lord, okay, what have I got going on? What, what's in my heart? I need to keep my heart pure before you. Listen to his voice and what he's trying to tell you. You know, I've heard from people that were bondages to alcohol and drugs that they had to hit rock bottom before they could look up. And that's the same. If you think about the prodigal son, you remember how he had everything that he needed in the father's house. He had plenty, but he wanted his inheritance early. 
So he went to the faraway land and he spent all of his money. The grass looked greener on the other side. But then all of a sudden, the money ran out. He was in a pig pen eating pig food, but he came to himself. What am I doing here? Has the Lord ever just come to you sometimes and said, how did I get from there to here? What happened? I knew better. But it comes, to, we have to come to ourselves sometimes to say, Lord, how did I end up here? And of course, he, I'll go back to my father's house because there was plenty there. I'll just be a servant in my father's house. And the father was so excited. He said, kill the calf. My son's coming home. See, we need to kill the calf and not the prodigal. We need to welcome them with love. So sometimes in that pit, we got to want to get out. Have y'all ever tried to pull somebody out of the pit that didn't want to come out? It will wear you out. Well, I don't think it's not going to work. I know what you're saying. I believe in Jesus, but. But when you're tired of being in the condition you're in and you say, Lord, I've got to have you. He will pull you out of any pit of despair that you're in. You got to say, I'm sick and tired of being worried. I'm tired of being depressed. I'm tired of being in bondage to alcohol or drugs or any other kind of addiction that I got. I'm, I'm, I'm just tired of all this. I'm tired of this sickness. I'm tired of going through the same thing time and time again. The Lord is saying, come on out. I ain't forgot you. I ain't forgot you. I'm not finished with you. You're the one that say you're finished with yourself. I'm not finished with you. Your greater anointing is ahead. But this is your day to be healed. See, Joseph went from the pit to the palace to jail. But he always had divine connections along the way, baker and butlers and people that got him to different levels. But he continued to trust the Lord and he didn't develop bitterness and anger in his heart. And it makes you wonder if God could have ever used him if he had allowed that bitterness to get in his heart or that hurt. But he was wrongly accused of rape to Potiphar's wife and spent 13 years in jail for a crime that he didn't commit. But you know, he wasn't ready for that mantle when he was 17 years old because he had just a little bit too much pride. And we know how God hates pride. That's why we got to humble ourselves before the Lord and stay humble before him. That's why I ask the Lord every time that I minister, Lord, if I said anything in ignorance or arrogance, forgive me. Because I want to keep my heart pure before him. Because everything that we do, it needs to be for Jesus, not for other people. If it's on your job or whatever you're doing, you're doing it for Jesus. So that's when the dream was fulfilled, that his brothers were at his feet he was in second command of Pharaoh, and because of him, the nation was fed. This world is hungry. And they're bowing down to things, but it's not Jesus Christ. They're hungry, and we have the word for them. We have the answer, and that's Jesus but we got to spread it. Jesus is the bread of life. He is what everybody needs. But they're waiting on us to spread it. So no matter what you're going through here today, don't give up in the pit. It's a lonely time. It's a time you think you're forgotten by God. But also it can be a great time because when you're alone with God... You don't have to hear influence of anybody else because he's there to empower you and to refresh you and to help you with whatever you're going through. So whatever you need from the Lord, all of you here and you watching my television, increase your faith, 
that this is your day for your miracle and your breakthrough. I pray this message blessed you. And maybe some of you are going through some hard times and you feel like you're in a pit of despair. But if you're saved, you always have the Holy Spirit with you. But I feel like I'm talking to some of you. You feel all alone because you're not saved. You don't know Jesus as your Savior. If that's you, I want to lead you to Jesus. You'll have problems, but you'll never be alone. So just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross just for me and you rose again on the third day. Come into my heart and come into my life. And from this day forth, I'm going to live for you. If you prayed that prayer, congratulations. Find you a good Bible-believing church and grow to be more like Jesus. If you're watching the program and you are in a pit of despair, maybe you need healing in your body or you need someone to pray with you, we do have a 1-800 number and we will be glad to pray with you. Just leave a message and we'll call you right back. Now, I can't go off the air without thanking our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you, and we pray for you every day. And we could use your help right now to be able to maintain the stations that we're on. And if you enjoy this program and you are being fed, we could use a donation of any amount. This world needs Jesus, and you could help us do that. Now, next week, we're going to have a brand new show, a brand new message. But until then, this is Sandra Hancock with Voice of Hope. And remember, your hope is in Jesus. My name is Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. Many of you that are watching this broadcast, you feel like you're at the end of your rope. You've got some impossible situations, but I got some good news. You have hope in Jesus because we still serve a supernatural miracle working God of now. I also would like to invite you to come out and join us in one of our powerful conferences in a city near you. It would make our day to have you as our guest. If you think our broadcast is powerful, wait and come and experience the presence of the Lord. You'll love it. Also, I want to thank our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you, and we thank you for helping us spread Jesus to a hurting world. God bless you all.